Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Design Anthologist. My name is Diane Haynes-Smith and today I'm very excited to be spending time with the founder of Cloth Fabric, Julie Patterson. Julie has very kindly invited me into her studio in the beautiful Blue Mountains and will be sharing with us her creative process. She'll also give us an insight into her enviable job as an artist and fabric designer. Hi Julie, thank you for having me in your studio. Firstly, I'd love to hear where you get your inspiration from, although looking around your garden, I think I can see where it comes from. My inspiration comes from wherever I happen to be, which um, is often up here. So it's my garden, the view down the end of the road, down in the mountains, um, down at the beach if I'm down there, wherever I am. In your company manifesto, you have the line, imperfection is our ally which really resonates with me. I'd love to hear about how you incorporate that into your work. Imperfection is our ally is it's very close to my heart because um, I think as soon as you think about the idea of perfection, you're gonna be disappointed. And I'm very pragmatic in my um, general life and the way I work and the way I design. So uh, imperfection allows for mistakes. And then in, in the um, idea of a mistake becomes lots of opportunity, lots of potential. So imperfection equals potential. One of the major things that draws me to your company is your collaboration with local suppliers and the utilisation of local manufacture. What are you working on at the moment with collaborators? Two of my collaborators that are very close to my heart at the moment are the, um, the lady in Orange who's got a mm -hmm. deer farm, a venison farm, um, where I'm printing on um, on her hides mm -hmm. which, uh, from a, a nose to tail philosophy that she has with the meat um, she, she produces you know there's lots of skin and lots of bone um, left so we, we worked out a project about where I screen print onto the onto the deer hide and I turn it into tabletop pieces like uh, placemats and, and table runners sit in underneath this ceramics that I produce as well with uh, a potter who's on the northern beaches I love your use of natural materials. We've seen the deer hide. What other materials do you use? Well, being a fabric company, mm -hmm. I use a lot of natural fibres there. Um, hemp has been the one of the cornerstones of the business for many, many years. The other one is linen. Um, uh, I avoid cotton because it yes. uses up so much water. So I'd say, yeah, the two key ingredients in my in my business would be hemp and linen for their sustainability. Their um, yeah, the, the, the way that they respond to the printing, mm. beautiful, the, the, the dyes and their inks just soak right into the fabric in a really okay. lovely way. And they're quite durable as well. Oh god, yeah, particularly... they're very durable. Again, from a sustainable perspective, I use really high quality fabric, so mm -hmm. uh, it costs a wee bit more, but you don't have to replace it anywhere near as often as you do with um, something that's not quite mm. so high quality. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to hear about your latest project. I've got quite a few on the go yes, at the moment, but sure. the one particularly close to my heart is the, um, the range of tea towels I'm producing. Um, we've had bushfires up here recently and lots of native animals got hurt, mm -hmm. and so I felt that it would be a beautiful thing to put that plot out to the world, let people know how to care for them with some instructions on a tea towel and some lovely drawings that I've done. And um, all money raised goes to WIRES, which is uh, an organisation for the net native animals, but the money is raised through my connection with the Foundation for National Parks and Wildlife because I'm an ambassador mm -hmm. of theirs and they're an amazing business. For people watching at home, this lifestyle appears very idyllic. I'm sure everyone would love to know any advice you'd have for them coming out of the office job into a creative job. How could they go about that? It does look idyllic. Uh, it's, it's taken me 20 years to get to this point. Um, it is idyllic for me. There's a lot of risk, but you have to be comfortable with, with a sense of risk. But I think uh, the advice I would give would be follow your heart and don't be distracted. And if you can find out a sense of, or develop a sense of what's true for yourself, by sitting with yourself a little bit, being, mm. being mindful, that practice is really important to me. Um, I know when I'm doing the right thing, and when you know you when you're doing the right thing, risk is minimised. Mm. So that's would be that would be the advice I would give. That's just avoid distraction, sit with yourself, and you'll get to understand what it mm. is that you really want. Two weeks have gone by and we're now in the inner Sydney suburb of Darlinghurst in Julie's shop, which holds all of her beautiful products. 
one of them being this lovely cushion which caught my eye as I walked in. Can you tell us a bit more about this cushion? I can. It's called Wall of My Pine and it's my current favourite. Being my most recent design, they're always my current favourites, but it is particularly lovely, I think. It's based on the close-up of the pine cone of the Wall of My Pine. Um, and there's a little painting in the studio, you might have seen a little black and white watercolour sketch that I did as the initial um, inspiration behind it and I've kept it tr as true to life as I possibly could with that whole watercolour halftone effect throughout the throughout the print which is um, it looks quite nice on this hemp it's got nice and rough and rustic um, so that's one of three designs from, from the latest collection called natural the other one is on the reverse side of this cushion that's called um, ironbark and that is a combination of using literally the print process so when you're squeegeeing the ink in through the fabric and say you run out of ink so it's an interpretation of um of a tree trunk but using the physical process that you go through when you're screen printing which is also i really like the effect of that because it's it's quite innovative in a low-tech way. You know, I'm not using te technology or digital enhancement to make that happen. It's the, it's the physical print process that, that gets that to happen, which I, thought, I think is much nicer. Right. And then the third design, this one, is called Thatch. And that, again, that's all very textual. That's like the, you know, the rattan furniture, the, the weaving of the yes. bark? That weaving texture, okay, basically. That's a great pattern. It's very, it's, it's quite new and it's starting to become uh, an all-time favourite because it's so easy to work with and we've done it in lots of different colours as well now. So, yeah, it's, um, it's one of those upholstery fabrics that can be easily, it's almost a texture, it's almost a print, sits in between the two two things. It's interesting yeah. as well because it's a geometric but I actually haven't seen that pattern before. You've got a, a completely new interpretation that's almost a, it's a zigzag and then it, it goes into a block. Hmm. This table is a great example of what we've been talking about with the collaborations, the deer hide and even the fabric prints here. Would you like to tell us more about this? Yeah, it's, um, it's a really good um, opportunity to show you my collaboration in situ kind of thing because uh, it's such an important part of of the way I tick, the, my, my process. I really enjoy getting people involved along the way. Well, these are the pots that, um, or the plates really, but I call them pots, that connect very strongly with the stuff that we were sitting on on the other side of the, of the room. I don't know if you can pick that up, the, the Wallamai imprint in that plate. Uh, this looks like leather as well, I, I have to say. Don't know if it would come across like that on the, on the film, but it's, it's, it's pressed um, stoneware with an oxide um, rubbed into the top, but this wall of my um, leaf pressed in. I think in the 70s, kids used to do it at school, that pressing it in, it's very basic, but something really tactile, it sits really beautifully with my, with my hemp and the printed linens. But yeah, I asked, pa I asked Catherine, you know, I'm looking at uh, the stuff that's in my garden, um, literally drawing what's in front of my face. Have you got by any chance a wall of my pine in your garden and as it happened she did which was quite unusual because Absolutely. you know they're kind of ancient flat ancient plants that people don't usually oh, have in their gardens yeah that's right all of my fabric is printed in a tin shed out of town by a man pr uh, producing it by hand well one man on one side of the table the other man on the other side of the table screen printing you might have done a little bit of that at school I think very low key, very um, low tech, and he just prints meters and meters and meters. It's like a, a glorified version of my studio, about times 20. Um, and it's been done like that from day one by the same printer. I've seen his kids grow from babies to uh, teenagers. Thank you very much, Julie, for having us in your studio, your beautiful shop, and for letting us have an insight into your creative process. It's absolutely my pleasure. I love talking about myself. Great, thank you. <laughs> All right. We're done with the video, okay. audio. Hurrah, hurrah.